Hey there, real quick, before we begin, you're about to watch a live stream, which means you're really kind of behind the scenes here because these lessons are usually watched in the archives, but you're here for the live taping of them. So if we mess up really bad, we're probably gonna chop that out, but you're gonna get to see all of our bloopers and mistakes. We'll also chop this off so no one is gonna see this part of the lesson but you. And because you're behind the scenes, you're probably gonna ignore my instructions when I say like, pause the video and go practice or whatever. You can if you want, it's just that you, everyone in the chat room then will be in different places in the video. That's fine. When you want to join us live again, go down to the bottom of the video, click on the live button, and that should take you straight to where we actually are now. So now here comes the part for everybody else. I'm really glad you're with us. The archives are fine, but my favorite is talking to you live. So see you in the chat room. <clears throat> Welcome back to KidsLearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and as you can tell from the countdown clock here, the lesson is about to begin. If this is your first time playing piano, welcome. I'm very excited for you. You're going to do great. Hopefully you already received from us the welcome packet in the mail, and maybe you even got started on the Absolute Beginners video pack to teach you the names of the notes and things like that. But if not, that's fine, you'll do great. I'll show you how to play all the notes. And if I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause the video or rewind it and go for the more difficult parts. You can always pause the video or rewind it and go for the more difficult parts. And even if you only learn a little bit of this song and you don't learn the whole thing, you'll still learn enough to help you build skills so you can learn other songs faster in the future. So jump in, give it a try. You're bound to end up at least a little bit better than you even are right now. Throughout the lesson, I may refer to Kloppel Academy, and you can check out that link on the website if you want. Basically, it's a program that takes you all the way from like learning the names of the notes, the very beginning, through 12 levels of classical and jazz music, through all the skills that you would need to become a professional pianist. So you would learn all the same stuff that you would learn if you're taking regular traditional piano lessons, probably plus a little bit more, but it takes about five to 10 years to complete. So you can just try out the first level, see if it's the kind of thing that you like, or if you just care about today's lesson and learning this song, then just ignore all those references and focus on today's lesson. If you're watching this at LearnPianoLive.com, there should be a PDF and an MP3 button right next to this video. The MP3 is a play-along track that you can use to practice more after the lesson, but a lot of students like to print out the PDF right now so they have it during the lesson. Careful, it could be up to like 30 pages, so just find the couple pages that you want and print those out. If you decide not to, that's fine. I'll show you all of the notes on screen as we go through it. And we will be going through five different levels of this song that all use the same play-along track. So, even if you've never played piano before, you'll still be able to do level one. And then as we go through level two, three, four, and five, then when we use that same play along track, you just keep playing your same version. 
If you're watching this lesson in the archives and you have a question during the lesson, then feel free to click on that survey button. And at the end of the survey, there's a place for you to ask your question and I will do my best to get back to you with the answer to that question. But if you're with us live as we're recording this today, then feel free to click on that chat button and you can talk with all the other students who are logged in during the live lesson. And if you have a question about the lesson, then you can just go ahead and type that into the box that says, ask Jamin a question and we will do our best to answer that question live in the lesson. All right, I think that's the end of the boring stuff. I'm ready to learn a song. Stay tuned at the end of the lesson and I'll show you how to win more points and earn more prizes next week. But for right now, let's get this party started. Welcome back to KidsLearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and this is our chat moderator, the incomparable Kendra. Guess what? I finished the second draft of my book like two days ago. Okay. How many drafts do you need to do of your book? The, I don't you're saying know. the book that you're writing, right? Yes. 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 You're writing Sorry, a book that's, that's clear. like 70,000 words or I'm something. I'm trying. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. So um, I think I finished the second draft. I made like all the big changes, okay. and now I'm giving it to a couple of people to read okay and i have I'm no really idea excited. i have no idea what your book is about yeah it's it's <laughs> fiction <laughs> okay it's contemporary i'll have to wait and find out yeah okay. i have wait it all written out date, like the rest of the world okay <laughs> that's fine well Klopple is here and uh, he's always rushing us to move on with the song and, and to, i know um, to move on and, and get through this thing. So let's start with our first note. The very first thing that you need is a D. So in order to find a D, we're going to find any group of two black notes, like those would work right there, or those would work right there, any group of two, and you're going to take the note that's in the middle. So that one right there. So the white note is between the group of two, and that's going to be a D. That's your first note. Now, the second note that you need is going to be a long way down from there. From the D, we're going to go all the way down, and that direction is down. Actually, if you put your thumb uh, on your left-hand thumb on a D, then your pinky would land on a G automatically. So that works the other way around. If you put your pinky on the D, then your thumb would land on a G. So if we just skip over these three notes in the middle, we'll land on a G. So we're going to play a D, and then we're going to go all the way down to a G. So that's skipping over three notes. So we get the D and then the G. And as soon as we hit the G, we're just going to start running straight back up to that D, like we're afraid of that G. So we're going to go from D to G all the way up to, to that D after hitting that G. So D, G, A, B, C, D. Those are the letters there. But you, once you hit that note, just run straight up. And actually... Like once you get to that D, you're like, oh, that G wasn't so bad. I kind of miss it. You're going to go back down and hit that G twice. So from that D down to G and hit it twice. So along with the track, that would sound something like this. I think it would sound something. Oh, okay. I don't know. We'll try one more time. Oh, there we go. And go. D. So it's really fast to get all the way up to that to that D. D, G, A, B, C, D, G, G. The next thing you're going to do is kind of similar. Uh, it uses some different notes, but the pattern will be very, very similar. So we're going to go up to an E, which would be one note past the D. So we found the, the D before. Now we're going to go one note past that. And then we're going to scoop down, not quite as far, just skipping over one note this time to get to the C. So we're going from the E down to C, and then go straight up for five notes again. Like that, just straight up from C up to G. So what we have so far would be D, G, A, B, C, D, G, G. Then skip over the D and go up to the E, and only skip down one note to the C and then up to the G. Now, one thing that I didn't quite tell you about, it was kind of a little white lie, was this note right here is not actually an F because it has like this little hashtag in it and that hashtag means sharp. So in order to play an F sharp, when we get up to this note right here, instead of playing this one, we're gonna play the slightly higher than it, this black note right here. 
So when we come up from that C, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So that's an F sharp. And then after that, we're going to go from that G. It's also a G, but it's the lower version of the G. So that G that we loved so much before and then we were also afraid of, we're going to go back and hit two more of those. So these last two notes are the same as these last two notes right there. So all together, what we have is D, G, A, B, C, D, G, G, up to the E. Skip down to the C. Watch out for the F sharp. And then back down to those Gs. We're actually almost done with the song, even though it looks like we've only started the song, because this thing right here is very repetitive. We're going to play a C, which is one note to the left of the note that we started on. So we started on this D. If you go back to your starting note and go over one note, you land on a C. And we're just going to use this little pattern right here that goes up one note and then down three times. So we're going to go up one and down three. One, two, three. And then turn around, come up a little bit so we can land on that B and do the exact same pattern. Up one, down three, and then we're gonna, this one's gonna kind of be like the backwards version of it. So you saw like this one had the shape of doing that, and this one had the shape of doing that, and this one's gonna have the shape of doing that. So we're gonna go up a bunch and then down one instead of up one and then down a bunch. So it's kind of in my brain, maybe it's just the weird way my brain works, but in my brain, it's like the, the upside down version of the other thing. So we're gonna go down to the F sharp, and then we're going to go up to G, A, B. And then instead of just coming down one, when we come down this time, we're going to skip down. So that's going to be F sharp, G, A, B, G. Last uh, note of this line is going to be an A right there. So after you pl play that whole thing, we've got like this two things that are the same right here. One that's like an up down, upside down version of it, and then an A. And that's that whole line. So starting at that C, it would be... that and then good news we're pretty much done because all of this right here is the same as the first line and all of this is the same as the second line and all of this is the exact same as things the third line with the exception of this line right here that got so weird and that was so difficult fortunately we don't have to do that anymore we can just do the same exact pattern that we had before so these three patterns actually are the same we're starting to see Go up one, down three, just like we did before. Up one, down three, and then up one, down three. Watch out for the F sharp, and then end it on a G. So be our last time through. Here we go. Um, so that last that last phrase should be the easiest, the e way easier of like the easiest one of these two right here, the difficult phrases. The second one you have to do is easier than the first one because it doesn't have that little upside down thing. But along with the track, uh, just get all the notes that you can. Make sure also that you're pausing the video and you're practicing wherever you need to so when we play along with the track that uh, you can join in as many notes as you can, play all of them that you can. Don't worry about the rest. We're all gonna miss some notes. Here we go. Starting on that D and go. D. Here's that pattern. There's the F sharp. That's really fast, man. And then the exact same thing. And then this pattern just follows all the way through. And you can use either hand or both hands to get through that. And also the play along track that you have to practice with is way slower than this one. So you can slow it way down and um, try that thing. All of those with the, uh, with the play along track. And we're gonna do more of this on the uh, future levels here, the level two and, and stuff when we get to those. But for right now, it's time to play a little game we like to call Diminished or Augmented. I think this is the most difficult game that we play. And Kendra, you're gonna have to jump in for this one because uh, yeah, this, this one's crazy. I'm gonna play two different kinds of crazy chords. One of them is called a diminished chord. It sounds like that. And one of them is called an augmented chord, and it sounds something like this. Oh, man. 
They're weird, weird chords that you don't even hit in Copple Academy until like level three or four. But uh, Kendra, if you want to jump in here and play along with us, and then you at home, see if you can guess the difference between the diminished and the augmented after we talked about it for a little bit, and see if you can get more of these than Kendra gets I'm right. I'm not, this is the game I'm least like ready for. I know. You know? Like, everybody feels that way. Don't tell any, don't, don't tell anyone, but. We, we played this game in college in music theory class, and there were a lot of people in, in even the, the college classes that like couldn't tell the difference between the uh, diminished and the augmented. So I Yeah, so you had said in previous lessons that the diminished is like feeling like it wants to go to something, yes, right? Yes, it or does something? to me. Yes, the diminished feels okay. uh, like unstable, like, oh, this is a weird chord, but it like almost wants to go somewhere. So in my mind, like that thing right there feels like it really wants to collapse in and go... Like it's all it's so hard almost to tell the at rest. Difference, yeah, though, it's they diminished. both sound weird. Yes. So if you can get past the weirdness and just say, Does this, "Is this thing wanting to go somewhere?" Then uh, that, that might help. The augmented chord though sounds like this, and like there's nowhere for it to go. It's just out there and weird. It almost has the feel of like the um, like the Alice in Wonderland. Oh. It has like that weird like. Like, it doesn't have anywhere that it really wants to go, but it's just, like, out there and weird. So that's the augmented feel to me. It's just like this. Like, it's just weird. But the diminished one, like, feels like, oh, yeah, we're supposed to be somewhere, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, so it's time to play the actual game. Here we go. I'm going to play either a diminished chord or an augmented chord. I'll play it three times, and you guess at home which one you think it is. This first one here... Does that feel like it wants to collapse in, or does that feel Alice in Wonderlandy? Or do you not know? That's totally reasonable too. Hmm. One more time. Guessing at home, and Kendra, what's your guess? Augmented. This one is not augmented. Ugh, I don't know how to play this. This is so hard. If it collapsed in, it would sound like this. I. Diminished. Okay, so she got one wrong. Yeah. Maybe you got that one right at home. Better okay. Than me already. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so then, what <laughs> or about this you're one? you're tied. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about this one right here? Does that feel like it wants to collapse in? Or does it feel Alice this in Wonderland? This is so unreasonable. No, it is. It's crazy. What do you think? I'm going to go with augmented again because I'll probably, if I keep saying it, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> <what> <laughs> yeah, that one's augmented. Yeah. Okay. So that's the one's augmented. So the first one is diminished. That one's augmented. What is this one right here? They all sound the same. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do one more after this. Does it sound like it wants to collapse in? And what do you think, Kendra? Diminished? I Absolutely. Was like, Can't yes. Smell, baby. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. So diminished. It wants to collapse in? Okay, this last one right here could be either one. What do you think this one is? Is that diminished or is that augmented? Does it sound like it wants to collapse in? Or does it sound like Alice in Wonderland? What do you think, Kendra? Diminished? No, no. Well, I got half of them, so that just means I'm <laughs> <know> guessing. <laughs> It could be, but at know. least we're listening for it, and that's really the, the key part. It's not that you get these all right, but you know that there's a thing called diminished. You know there's a thing called augmented, and the diminished kind of wants to collapse in, and the augmented kind of fits in with the Alice in Wonderland theme. I need to practice, and, apparently. Sure, we all do. <laughs> we all do. That's perfectly reasonable, but that was diminished or augmented, and that means it's time for Mailbag. <laughs> If you'd like to win an extra 750 points by being the mailbag winner, just fill out the survey at the end of the lesson or send us a message anytime during the week using the contact button at the top of the page. And this week is from Elijah Piano. who says, Dear Jamin, how do I get into level two in Clapple Academy? So there's not a good way to get into level two of Clapple Academy unless you uh, pass through level one first. You can buy it for $900 if you want. But don't do that, that's a ridiculous price. So I called my web guy, I'm like, hey, uh, how do I lock people out of the other courses? He's like, you can't. I was like, really? How do you lock people out? He's like, put it at a ridiculous price. So that's why it says it's $900 to get into Clawful Academy level two. It's not really, it's free for everybody who passes 
Clap Academy level one. So once you pass level one, you've submitted all of your videos uh, and, and you've actually passed all of your stuff, then uh, you can go to it and it'll say free for members of your group. And then you click on it and you're in. So it's totally free if you're a paying subscriber, uh, but it is $900 for everybody else. So um, yeah, don't pay the $900. It's totally not worth it. Um, and if you haven't completed level one, you don't, you, there's will be a lot of material in there that you don't understand anyway. So it would be a wasted $900. Don't spend that money, but do get in all of your videos for uh, level one so you can get it for free all right well now it's time to tell you a little bit about our song it's a couple secrets we call it secret information secret information okay so here's the part of the lesson where we've got a little bit of information about the song that most people don't know but I'm going to tell you anyway because, well, you're special. Here's our top secret folder. And inside our top secret folder, telling us about our song. Ooh. Yeah, actually. So this song, the song is called, the title of the song is Minuet in G. That actually means that, oh, yeah, and if you can give me the tablet on this, that'd be helpful too. Yeah. Um, so then it's called Minuet in G, which means that it's a minuet, a little like mini song, but also it's in G. And if you're in Kloppel Academy level, I think level two or higher, you're learning that the key of G means that you use all white notes with the exception of F sharp, which is exactly why in this song, all of the Fs are sharp, even though it looks like it's in the key of C because like it's almost all white notes. But you get to this one F and it's an F sharp. And you're like, hang on a second. It said it was in G. And if things are in G, they have an F sharp in them. I bet this song is actually in G. It's not just the title of the song. It's also a description of the song. And our second thing is, oh, that's right. Okay. This thing right here, there's a name for this thing where we do like a little pattern. We have, and then we do another one, and then we do another one. That's called a sequence, and this shows up in a lot of songs, and it really helps you memorize songs a lot more quickly. If you can see the sequences, that's where you like just take some little pattern and you just like shift it over one, or you flip it upside down, or because that's what a lot of songs are. It's just the same little phrase, but you just move it around to different parts on the piano, or you flip it upside down, or you do it backwards, or whatever. Uh, so that's called a sequence, and once you can learn those, learn to see those patterns on your own, then you don't need me nearly as much because you can just go, oh yeah, this third line, no problem. It's just a sequence of this thing right here. Then I bump it down one and do it. And then I do it upside down and then I land on an A. And then you already know the whole entire line without even really looking at any of the notes. Same thing down here. We got a sequence. This is an even better sequence because all it does is shift the note over one. And you can make up your own sequences. So you can make like a three note sequence. It goes like this or anything. And then you just take that sequence and move it over one. And then move it over one. And then move it over one. Maybe turn it upside down, move it over one, move it over one, move it over one, and then end on a C. That could be a song right there, actually. That totally sounds like a song. And it's just a little three note sequence that we just shift around in different places. So that's what we call a sequence. And that's the end of our secret information, which means it's time for us to go to level two. Transitioning to level two. This may be confusing to level one students. So please continue to practice the level one version or visit learnpianolive.com slash level two for a detailed explanation on how to level up. Okay, so in level two, we're gonna do the exact same notes that we already did on level one. It's just now on the official lines and spaces of the treble clef. This is the treble clef right here. That means you're gonna be basically using uh, your right hand for all of the notes. It's all the, the higher-ish notes that are here. And uh, we'll probably be actually playing it later on up here, up an octave. So it's more like in the right hand note range. Uh, but we can play it down here for right now since this is where all the letters are written. Um, two more things we need to pay attention to in level two. This thing right here is that sharp that we were talking about before. That's like a, a little secret to um, all the people who know about keys that, hey, we've got one sharp. And everybody who knows their keys is like, one sharp, wait a second. There's only one key that has just one sharp. That's the key of G. And that one sharp is always F sharp. So we must be in the key of G because this song has F sharps in it. That was a lot of words. If that didn't make any sense and you don't care, 
that's perfectly fine. Uh, if it didn't make any sense and you do care, let me know. And you probably want to jump into Quaffle Academy. And then right here, this is telling us that we're in three, four times. So usually in most songs, we count one and a two and a one, two, three, four, and we all go. In this song, we're going to count one, two, one, two, three, and then we're, we're in right here. So this is going to be beat one. This is going to be two and three three and and again that's stuff you learn in Clopple Academy level two and higher so um, we've got three beats in each measure one two three instead of four beats so make sure that you're not putting an extra beat in the way that most people accidentally put an extra beat in is they uh, say three but they like hold it out so they would play this line right here this is playing it the wrong way saying the right counting but playing it the wrong way they would go one two three one two three but you can hear like that three got like got an extra ye at the end like one two three ye if you feel yourself doing that that's actually not a ye that's actually a secret four and you should not do that that's one two three four but don't do that what you want to do is one two three one two three don't give yourself that extra beat at the end of each of the measures if you're counting that stuff out because uh, that's actually four four time even though you're counting in three you're really counting one two three ye all right uh i think that's all that we have to pay attention to in level two that's all of the additional things that uh, would help you to play this if you never heard the song before and then someone just gave you the music you'd be like okay treble clef we're in the key of g this is in three four time i gotta make sure i don't put an extra beat in bam you're ready to go uh so let's try this thing with the track if you're on level one then uh, play whatever notes you can along with this it's really crazy fast we're gonna start uh on this d and go down to that g and walk straight through it everybody playing the notes that you can don't worry about the ones that you miss let's go two Three, one, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. That's all of the notes along with the track. It's pretty fast. Fortunately, it has all those sequences and stuff in it. But uh, we're going to try to add in a little bit of left hand the way this song was originally written. So we're going to jump ahead to level four. Let's check that out right now. Transitioning to level four. This may be unsettling to lower levels. Please continue to practice your own level or visit learnpianolive.com slash level four for an in-depth explanation on how to conquer this level. So this stuff gets a little bit crazy, but uh, I'll walk you through all of these notes. And also, this is in the bonus section right here, uh, because level four and the bonus section are pretty much the same thing. The bonus section does have one additional uh, chunk in it that the rest of it doesn't. So if you heard that and you're like, wait a second, that's not the whole entire song. This right here is the whole entire song. But because everybody else is working on just the first part right here, the first three lines, we're just going to do that much right there. So the first thing you need to take a look at is the, uh, the right hand all stays exactly the same. I think right yes the right hand stays exactly the same so the left hand is the only thing we're adding in it's a lot but uh, fortunately at least one of the hands gets to do what you're already uh, doing in the earlier levels then over here we've got these three notes all being played at the same time and that's supposed to line up with this note right here so all of that together are these notes right here so a G and a B and a D while your right hand plays this Unfortunately, it doesn't get to stay there for too terribly long because right when you get to this note right here, it's supposed to be lined up with this note right here, this A. So those, you're going to want to take this really, really slowly. Um, even if you've done several songs before, this is going to be one of the more difficult uh, level four uh, songs that we've done before. So we're going to go there, and then you're going to play that G, A, B, C, and then right on this one here. We're going to play this note right there. And then fortunately, these guys right here, these last two notes, get to be played by themselves. So we get to play. OK, then the next one is going to be very similar. And we're going to play this right here because we've got that sequence right there. So we've got the C and then the B there that are lined up with those notes right there 
that's kind of how this whole thing is going to work. Um, we'd go. Then we're going to keep moving down in the left hand for. This is, gets, this is the one that gets really weird. This is probably the hardest measure of the whole entire thing right here. Your left hand's going to play. That's not too terribly hard. Your right hand is going to play. And that's not too terribly hard either, but trying to do those both together right there is kind of crazy. Um, and then this one is going to go from there down to a D and then up to a C. So, and then we're back to this thing right here. And that's uh, back to there. Those are like very similar sections. <laughs> that's all of your left hand for all of those sections. Um, let's. Let's not try this with the fast track. Nah, let's try it with the, the fast track. Let me first play it through it though um, with just that, um, those uh, two hands together. So we'd go. And then up to the C. Then. This is the crazy part right here. track yikes make sure you pause the video and you practice uh, everywhere you need to so when we play along with the track you can play whatever chunk you're trying i wouldn't try the whole thing but i'm going to we'll see how that goes ha ah. two three one two three So that's all crazy. Don't try that all at the same time. Just take one little chunk at a time. But that is how you would play all of the notes for this song. So unfortunately, I think that means this time for us to say goodbye until next time. We've got a lot of streams going on these days. So uh, you've got the, the downloadable PDF that has all the levels on here and your play along track is slower than one you today. So you should be able to do that. But even if you can and you want to, and send us a video of you trying and you and I will work one on one to get through all of this. Just like everything else. So send us your uh, video submission and even if it's not this one, something else you're working on, send it along. We want to see you play. We'll see you next time. Love you. Bye. Hey, great, you're still here, so you must want more. Well, I've got four things for you. Archives, practice tips, points, and jokes. First of all, if you didn't like this week's song, I'm sorry, and you can always go to learnpianolive.com slash next song and vote for what our next song should be. And right now, you can go to the Kids Lesson Archives and just pick a different song and work on that this week. Now, you probably don't have the whole song down yet, so what you can do is, this helps a lot of people, just next time, pretend that you're the in-studio student and that in level three and level five, we're gonna be checking in with you and you've gotta play at least some of the songs. I find that my students that come in and they're the in-studio students, they actually learn the songs way faster than they learn their regular songs that I give them in their regular lessons. So if you just pretend that you're the in-studio student and that someone's gonna be watching you, then that might help a lot. 
Also, you have the practice log that you can send in for extra points, and that can help you practice. And there's the daily challenge where you get extra points for logging your practice time there as well. Just click on daily challenge and it will play a video that doesn't have any sound really. You just practice and then every now and then you'll hear a sound like this. The number seven. And then once you collect all of the letters and numbers, then you just put them in and you submit that and you get points for doing that and you get better because in between all those letters and numbers, you're practicing your song from the week. Of course, once you know the song, then definitely record yourself on your mom's cell phone or on your tablet or on whatever and use the video submission button and so you can send us your video that way and get points for that as well. You might even become the featured video for the week. All right, so let's move on to points. Here's the different ways you can get points. You can get up to 50 points just for participating in the chat in the live lesson. You get 300 points on top of that if you are the person in the chat room that week who makes the most helpful comments during the chat. That daily music challenge thing that I told you about, every day when you click on that and you submit the secret code, 150 points just for doing that. Every song comes with a practice log, and if you fill that out and have your parents sign it and you send that in, that's worth 300 points right there. Each week on Facebook and in the email that we send you, we give you a new weekly activity. It's just a fun little maze or puzzle or something to do. It doesn't really have much to do with music, but it does have something to do with that week's song, and it has something to do with getting you 150 points. Then if you click on survey at the end of the lesson and you fill that out and give us some feedback about the song, then we've given out up to 500 points before for great comments and feedback in the survey. Of course, submit your videos of you playing. Almost every video that gets submitted earns at least 200 points, even if it's not perfect. I guess work on it a little bit, but I'm just saying it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, perfect. Here's another one. Every single month at LearnPianoLive.com slash contest, we have a contest and usually give out at least 400 points and oftentimes there are other gift cards and other prizes included in that contest. Okay, now we're getting into some big numbers. If you ever go to a concert that is classical music or it's classic jazz, which means like swing and bebop and stuff like that, you can ask your parents if it's a classic jazz concert. Then you get 500 points just by having your parents let us know what concert you attended. Now I keep asking you to send us your videos and almost always you get points right up front for submitting those videos. Don't forget to put the legal disclaimer on your video. You have to say at the beginning, this is for use at kidlearnpianolive.com. But here's an additional way to pick up 750 points. If later on, a month down the road, a year down the road, Five years down the road, if one of the videos that you submit to us ever gets a thousand views, send us the link to your video. We will give you 750 points. Okay, but is there anything that I could do that's worth thousands of points? Yes, there is. If you're in Coppola Academy, every time you go from level one to level two, or level two to level three, every single time you level up, you get 3,000 points. And that's not even the biggest one. You get huh? 5,000 points every single time someone signs up for kidslearnpianolive.com and they say that you are the one who sent it here. Okay, last thing before I say goodbye for real. I told you that I would tell you my favorite joke, and here it is. A butcher backs up into his meat grinder and gets a little behind in his work. Just a little behind in his work because he's a butcher. It's funny. Trust me. It's awesome. If you didn't think it was funny, that's fine. But go to learnpianolive.com slash jokes and uh, you can see some of our students' favorite jokes and you can submit your own. I think that's finally it. I will see you in another live lesson. Love ya. Good luck. Have fun.